here for our children. Hi everyone, welcome. I'm Julia, I'm Executive Director and Chief Legal Counsel of Our Children's Trust. And I'm super excited about what you all witnessed in the courtroom just now. And as you know, this is the case Navahine versus the Hawaii Department of Transportation. Is this on? No, we're testing it. Right now. Yeah. for showing up today for this really, really important hearing. I mean, what you just saw in there is democracy in action. It is the Hawaii Constitution being realized and argued on behalf of these young people. And I am so honored to introduce a few people today. Um, first, I wanna just give a big shout out and if everyone can raise their hands to Le'enala Le Lay for the awesome argument that she presented today. Uh, from Earth Justice and her co and our other co-counsel from Earth Justice, Earth Justice Isaac. And then I wanna bring Andrea Rogers up. So Andrea Rogers is also co-lead counsel uh, with Lay on this case. And so she's gonna tell you a little bit about what happened in the courtroom today. So thank you so much for being here. Good afternoon and thank you so much. And young people, thank you so much for joining us today in the courtroom. I hope you learned a little bit about what democracy in action looks like today. I just wanna describe a little bit about what happened and, and what you saw today. Essentially, you saw the state of Hawaii and its lawyers argue that climate change is a problem that can be dealt with 20 years from now. They said they're doing the best that they can and that they shouldn't be pushed into doing things that they just don't wanna do. Even though the science, the legislature has all commanded them to decarbonize the transportation system as soon as possible. Um, it's frustrating when you hear that from your government entity. This is an existential crisis that needs to be addressed today. There shouldn't be any question about that. The legislature has been very clear in recognizing that. But what the state government would like to do is close the courthouse door on these young people so they cannot explain how climate change is harming them today and threatening their lives in Hawaii today and into the future. The court asked a tremendous amount of questions, which is really helpful. He clearly had questions about whether the state should be required to hold a, be held accountable for breaching their duties under the statutory laws. And importantly, he recognized that these young people have constitutional rights at stake and that courts do have a role in interpreting and enforcing the Constitution. Ms. Lay came back strong and clearly articulated why this court has jurisdiction to hear and decide these claims and why these young people should have their day in court. Lay explained why greenhouse gas emissions are increasing in Hawaii and transportation emissions are anticipated to increase 41% by 2030. I think anybody can expect that that's different than what the law requires. And the court can and should be allowed to declare that that conduct is unconstitutional. We're very pleased with how the argument went today. We're very hopeful that Judge Crabtree listened to the arguments and will allow this case to go forward. So finally, these young people can have their day in court and testify and explain why a remedy is needed to ensure that the Department of Transportation is held accountable for reducing greenhouse gas emissions instead of going in the opposite direction. So thank you so much, and I will turn the mic back over to Marty, who will introduce some of the plaintiffs. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to invite up Navahine. And, and Kaunohi. And Kala. Aloha, o wā o Navahine, he kūpā aino o haki pū'u. O pū'u o hule hule ku umauna, o puna ko uwai. My name is Navahine, and together with my fellow Aloha Aina plaintiffs, we are suing the government to protect our future. For ten generations, Maohana has farmed kalo on the same kuleana lands in haki pū'u. 
Each generation has passed on the responsibility to care for and preserve this Aina, our traditional practices, and our subsistent lifestyle. As the next generation, this Kuyana will be passed to me. I am blessed to be of this Aina and to carry on this legacy of Mahi Ai. But the current government's decision to stay dependent on fossil fuels continues to create a burden on me and my generation. I'm looking at a future where I'm challenged with how to protect our Aina, our natural resources, and our heritage while it faces so many threats. As Kanaka Oibi, we have a relationship with this Aina, a reciprocal connection to this ecosystem that we are a living part of. That means I, as a native Hawaiian, live and feel the negative impacts of climate change in my own Vahipana and in every part of my being. It has become overwhelming. I've seen this and I live and feel the impacts on our Aina in our Lo'i Kalo. I feel the effect in our Awai system that has been in place for centuries that brings life to our valley. When there is extreme flooding and the stream overflows and erodes the Awai and Lo'i banks, and during droughts when our soil dries up and the water barely trickles through. When the leaves of the huli get blight or drown from flooding, flooding, when they wither and waste away from dry cracked soil, when the corn is small and the harvest yield is low due to high salinity levels, I feel climate change. When the high tides and rising sea levels overflow and flood the wall of our local ia, destroying the foundation built stone by stone by our kupuna, I feel climate change. When fish within our local ia die because of the imbalance of fresh and salt water in their brackish home due to heavy rains and flooding, I feel climate change. I have witnessed the effects of climate change on our Aoku, Kolea, Alaiula, Koloa, monk seals, and Hawaiian greasy, green sea turtles. The many ohana of wildlife, who like my own, have lived for generations in Hakipu'u and are now dealing with loss of home and nesting spaces. I feel it as roads wash away and our ivi kupuna are disinterred from their peaceful resting places with no protection by the so-called state. The negative impacts of climate change are everywhere. In our favorite surf breaks, our puuhonuas and sacred places passed down to us to protect. This is why I joined this constitutional climate lawsuit with 13 other youth plaintiffs to hold the state of Hawaii accountable for their actions. I'm standing here because this government's refusal to address climate change in a real and tangible way speaks once again of the continued negligence of all things we as Kanaka Oivi are. They disregard and fail to uphold their own laws. They continue to fail in the responsibility to us, the Kanaka Oivi, and all our future generations. And like me, we are not going to go away quietly. This failure is just added trauma in a long history of attempts to deny us as Native Hawaiians our natural inheritance. As I look to the future of my Lahui, my Ahupua'a, my Ohana, it's so hard to know that we are depending upon those currently in power to act right now in very big ways, or this Aino, my heritage, may end with me. We all need to assess and change our relationship to our land, our Honua. We must learn to live in sync with our environment once again, like our kupuna taught, so that our unique way of life in these islands can endure for generations to come. We must hold the line, as my Papa Kiyoki would say, stand true in what we know is pono, and hold this government accountable in their sworn duty to maintain a clean and safe environment. Mahalo. Aloha kako. My name is Kaono Hikunibai Gunu and I am a spear fisherman in Hawaii and I like to go fishing around every week. And what I've been seeing throughout the years of fishing and spear fishing is that my reefs have been dying out. Reefs has been having less fish, bigger fish, and the color of the reefs have changed as well. I've heard stories from my father and my grandparents that the reefs used to be beautiful, fruited fish and a lot of fish, they can go every day and still have plenty of fish to go fish all, all year long. But when I go out there, I can only go here once a week, gather for that one week, then let it rest, let it grow back for another month. And I feel like that it's my con constitutional right for the state of Hawaii to fight against climate change, to make it better. And I want my future generation to see how beautiful our resource are right now 
I don't want them to see this dead way Corey Reeves. It's just sad to see. It hurts my soul. And I want to I want people to know that Hawaii is it's a beautiful place place and I want that to be seen in the future. I want to keep Hawaii a beautiful place. I want this place to grow it away, die away. I want this place to be beautiful forever. Thank you. My kalai okumukahi kavelo ana o kala ma papa hana ma pua kea. O wa o kala la pui nalu, Helen, kamana o kalawa e i kamalu o kanani o kala, or to girl winter. Wahana i o wa me ke ano he kiki o kaina mahana kua i ame waialua o ahu. A ua lilo no ho i wa i wahine aloha aina. I am here today, and I am in this fight with my fellow Konaka because there's no more time for poor decisions. We are the last generation. We are the last generation to know the coastlines of our islands the way that our ancestors knew them. We are the last generation to know what a stable climate looks like. And we are the last generation to, who has it in our power to make a change for the better before it's too late. We are here today to be that change. We are here today to hold the state government accountable for their errors. We are here today to be the voice for our grandchildren's grandchildren. The state has known for a very long time about the realities of the climate crisis. We have seen governors give speeches, but we have not yet seen action from the executive branch. We need action. Specifically, we need the Department of Transportation to reverse course and implement clean transportation right now. We are here to remind them of their legal obligation to the people of Hawaii, and most importantly, its children. We simply have no other choice. Our future is on the line. Mahalo nui. Thank you very much. Um, I wanted to uh, give some thank yous first to Puohala Elementary School, where Navahine and Pohonu, who are uh, clients, attended, to uh, the Hawaii Youth Climate Coalition, who helped uh, to support us in this effort, um, and Wisdom Circles, um, who's here, who also helped with the efforts. Um, there are specific things that people can do now to uh, support the this case, Navahine versus uh, Department of Transportation. Um, first, there you can sign a wall of support. Uh, it's on the Our Children Trust website, ourchildrenstrust.org backslash Hawaii. Um, you can also support us on social media with the hashtag Hawaii VGovHI. Um, and you can also sign up for updates by email to come to the next hearing. Um, this case is definitely going forward, uh, regardless of what uh, happens today. And so please uh, stay involved and uh, imua. Mahalo. If, there, if you're interested in doing independent one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one interviews, we have um, uh, clients and attorneys who are available, and we can uh, set it up on the sides to help everyone um, get, get the, uh, the quotes and the input that they need. Thank you very much. <laughs>